Hi, my name is Plasmodium falciparum. I am a protozoan, which is a unicellular eukaryotic organism of the phylum AP complexa of the supergroup Chromalveolata. What do I do? Plasmolaria! Malaria is a serious and fatal disease caused by me and my four siblings, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium malariae, Plasmodium oval, and Plasmodium nalesi, in our big Plasmodium family, spread by the bite of infected mosquitoes. Did you know that I cause 75% of malarial deaths worldwide? Still don't know who I am? I'm that disease that kills approximately 2 million people globally each year. Okay, so let's talk about my life. I have a complex life story. Most of my Plasmodium family is located in tropical and subtropical regions, which is basically near the equator. For example, Africa. Fun fact about me, I kill one African child every minute. I don't know if that's good for you, but for me, I multiply. Anyways, back to my life story. I began as a sporozoite inside an oocyst which contains the zygote. A sporozoite is a haploid, which is half of a cell or an immature cell. When the oocyst lyses, the sporozoites are free inside the gut of the host mosquito. Not all mosquitoes can transmit me into a vertebrate host. Only infected female mosquitoes from the Anopheles genus are capable of transmitting malaria. For example, Anopheles gambiae. Female Anopheles prefer to feed at night and usually start searching for their meal at dusk. In the cycle of transmission, the mosquito, the definitive host, and the transmission vector penetrates the host's skin with her syringe-like proboscis and heads right for a capillary. There are two tubes in the proboscis. One tube is responsible for sucking blood from the host, while the other tube ejects the sporozoites into the host. When the sporozoites enter the bloodstream, they travel to the liver, where they infect the liver cells and asexually reproduce, producing thousands of merozoites. At this point, no clinical symptoms are triggered yet. Symptoms only show approximately 10 to 15 days after the host has been bitten. The classic symptom of malaria is paroxysm, which is characterized as cyclical occurrence of coldness, followed by shivering, fever, and sweating, and is recurrent every 36 to 48 hours. Other symptoms include fatigue, vomiting, headache, yellow skin, hemoglobin in urine, retinal damage, convulsions, seizure, coma, and death. Next, the liver cell lyses and releases the merozoites. These merozoites invade immature red blood cells which provide a tasty snack for the parasite, using their apex and initiate in a series of asexual multiplication cycles called blood schizogony. When the merozoites invade the red blood cells, it brings forth symptoms such as chills, fevers, anemia, kidney failure, and potential death. The red blood cells then burst and release gametophytes. The gametocytes are ingested by the Anopheles mosquito during a blood meal and if they are not ingested, they remain in the host not doing any harm until it is cleared by drugs or the immune system. The gametocytes mature into male and female gametes. Then, the gametes perform a form of sexual reproduction called meiosis, which produces a zygote. The cycle of my life then repeats once again. Now that we got all that complicated stuff out of the way and done with, let's continue. Throughout history, many people have tried to prevent malaria from infecting them. They use methods such as concealing their body as much as possible to avoid skin exposure, stabbing insecticide on unprotected skin, using protective insecticide-treated mosquito nets at night, and using insecticides indoors. How do you know if you have me and you? The most common way to diagnose malaria is through microscopic examination of blood, using blood films or antigen-based rapid diagnostic tests. Another method is by using polymerase chain reaction to detect if parasite DNA has been developed. However, this method is not widely used in areas where malaria is common because of its cost and complexity. Fun fact! Before the 1600s, the consumption of spiderwebs was thought to be the cure to malaria and when it was discovered that it did not seem to be the case, people resorted to consuming live spiders in addition to eating spiderwebs. As of today, however, there is still no vaccine developed that can cure malaria. When traveling to countries such as Africa, it is recommended that travelers are issued anti-malarial drugs such as chloroquine and chemoprophylaxis, which suppresses the blood stage of malarial infection. However, resistant strains of malaria have developed with time, which makes some anti-malarial drugs useless. Treatment of the individual depends on the area where the infection was acquired, the status of the patient, and any allergies the individual might have. If it is treated early, it can be cured.
Patients with severe falciparum should use continuous intravenous infusion. Some other drugs that are active against parasite forms in the blood are quinine, atovacon proguano, artemether lumafantrine, and methylkine. Pregnant women should be very cautious with the drugs that they ingest because it's dangerous, you know? Well, that was my life, the life of Plasmodium falciparum. Remember, it is important to keep in mind that if you show symptoms of malaria or suspect that you have been infected with malaria, to contact a doctor immediately. Thanks for listening! Bye!